I am, I'm here to talk to you about getting young people involved in liberty. And I think that liberty is a very useful idea, and it really surprises me that there aren't more young people here and at various discussions around the state. I'm 20 years old. I'm two months away from becoming 21, so I understand firsthand one of the biggest things that young people can strive for for more liberty. I, uh, I was brought up in a military household with a father who, you know, I, I love him, but he can definitely be described as an authoritarian. When I was six years old, my kindergarten teacher uh, said that I told my mom that I had uh, ADHD. My mom, luckily, was an educator herself, so she was smart enough to say, uh, no, he doesn't. Um, I was actually called Hitler my senior year of high school for saying uh, to a, my high school teacher that I didn't think that uh, health care should be a human right for everyone and paid for by uh, the other people who can thank. And yeah, I, I kind of I understand 100% why people would want to fight for liberty, and, that, and that's why I'm here. What I don't understand, however, is why the same people that I grew up with that you know, hated having to go home on time, hated having to, you know, turn over their cell phone at night, will vote for a president who, in my opinion, is the most authoritarian I've seen in, ever in, in our country's history. Under Barack Obama's reign, young people have been under attack like nobody else. The Affordable Care Act, we, you know, we talked about it a little bit before, but it contains several cost-shifting measures that put the most of the cost of the increasing health care cost onto our backs, onto young people's backs. The NSA intrusion has only expanded under President Obama, and you know, from a, for a generation that really didn't want their parents or their, their girlfriends to go for their cell phones, to now say Uncle Sam is going through our cell phones and getting all of this information, I don't understand why they could support that. What I don't understand is why the generation that brought, you know, gave birth to Google and the iPhone is supporting these policies that are really going to just rob us of the freedom that we yearn for. Let's talk about a number here. Fifty-six thousand dollars. What does that mean to any of you guys? How much debt? Well, you you saw right to the end of that. Thank you. I was gonna. I was gonna say. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I could pay off college. I could finish my college if I had $56,000. I could buy a new car, I could put a down payment on a house. I know there are probably some of you who have had children that you would love to save for college for and, you know, and raise for 18 years. $56,000 is, is a significant chunk of money, but unfortunately, I already have to spend that on something else at some point in the future. Some of you might actually escape having to spend that money, which you guys are lucky, but <laughs> as soon as we start paying down that debt, we're talking $56,000 for every American citizen, from the oldest to the youngest among us. That, that's wage slavery. And the fact that that's not even the top of it yet. We haven't even stopped growing that budget yet. We are still adding to that deficit. And by 2020, we are projected to be at $22 trillion in debt. That's terrifying to me. And that's only the reported debt. We haven't even taken into account all the unfunded pension liabilities. And I'm sure that Wendy can tell you much better than I can about all of those numbers because she's dealt with it on a municipal level. But the estimates of that are up to $262 trillion. That's wage sleep. That there is there is no way that we can get out from under that without instituting upwards of a 70% tax rate on everyone, on, you know, on, on all income, on all money that comes into you. And why are you going to go to work if more than two-thirds of your money is being taken away? Why, why are you going to start a business? Why are you going to do anything if two-thirds of your product is taken away from you at the end of the day? I really don't understand why my generation doesn't love liberty. Talks about the NSA stuff already. They have actually been using that information to target American citizens for arrest. They have been taking the information, that, you know, we've all probably heard about the, the fusion centers as well. They take that information, bring it from this, this national organization that is supposed to be in place to protect us from, from international terrorism, and bring it down so that local law enforcement agencies can use that against 
we the people. I, you know, and I understand if you've got nothing to hide, if you've got nothing to hide, you've nothing to worry about. But that's not. <laughs> See, Andy came down here shaking his head. That's not America. They, what they're showing is that they don't trust us. They, they don't want us to have the ability to own guns because they think we're going to use those guns to hurt other people. They don't want us to be able to pick our own health care because they worry that we're going to pick our own and leave everyone else to die. They don't want us to be able to choose where we go to school because they worry that the, the richest among us are going to leave all the poor and the, the whites are going to leave them. They, they don't trust us. They simply don't trust us to make decisions that are in the best interest of ourselves and everyone else. And I think Honestly, the easiest way to reach out to young people is to ask them, do you want a government like that? Because nine out of ten times they're going to say no. And then go even further and say, do you want that government that sends in helicopters, snipers, and armed federal agents to take some guy's cattle? Do you want that government telling you how to get health care, telling you what it has to cover, telling you when and where you can actually get access to the health care? I don't think I do. I, I know most people I talk to don't. The thing we can do, every single one of us, is talk, do things on a local level. It, you know, it, it, we don't need a billion dollar political machine to do things, to go talk to our neighbors. We don't need any media support to write letters to the editor. And honestly, I, I, I see all the time, you know, the, the type of people that go into teaching, the type of people that go into journalism, they're not our people. And that's a problem. You know, we, we need more teachers that are willing to stand up in kindergarten. And, you know, obviously it doesn't have to be a political message, but if you can instill in someone the values that are important to still instill in a free society, those values are going to go with them throughout their entire life. And if they have someone that they can look up to from a young age saying, this is, you know, this is the way you should live your life, that's going to stick with them. And, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not going to be something that we can win next year. It's not going to be something that's going to happen quickly, but it's got to be, it's got to be a groundswell. It has to start at the bottom and we have to work our way up because other, I mean, we don't have access to the, the national media. We barely have access to the state media. You know, we, we really have to convince our neighbors and our friends to support our ideas and then go from there.